this room is like, you know, so crowded. She goes, what do you mean? I said, the egos are too big. We better get out of here. <laughs> So, so put me with the poor, put me, put me in the village in the Philippines, I love that. All this pompous, I'm better than you and I'm going to dress in a way that makes me feel more important and you can be intimidated. You know, that's, that stuff goes on even in the body of Christ. My goodness, my goodness, it's so sad. So there are people that no one else will invest in and they're the ones Jesus went for. And this is the best exercise of your leadership. Yeah. Look for people who really need leading. Yeah. And say, I'm going to invest myself into you for a season. He, he released responsibility and ownership in ministry. In, um, we talked about this already. So this is like, you know, letting others come alongside. He had a succession plan. I, think I mentioned that a couple of times. All right, so he knew he wasn't going to be around. The Holy Spirit was going to come, empower these people, and they were going to do more than what he did. That was his plan. Yes. It was never like, you know, you're going to be junior leaders, guys. He says, you're going to do greater things than I did. That's scary. We just want to do some of the things he did, right? <laughs> but the, the challenge is always nagging in the back of my mind. He goes, you will do greater things. You will do greater things. So... He's still waiting for that, and we're still wondering how we can do it. <laughs> Yay. Transition and replacement. Jesus practiced uh, leadership transition and replacement. So transition is when you bring people alongside you. Um, we in London, when we planted a church in London, we had um, uh, maybe in, in six months about 60 people, but we'd have like 30 at the leaders' meeting. And that was a really good deal. And I've tried to, I've tried to do that ever since. but Because um, every one of you who leads something, make sure there's somebody you're passing on that to. So it doesn't matter that you're not a full-grown leader. You know something that people don't know, so pass that on to somebody else. Yeah. We've got a few old people in our church, and um, I stood them up last year. I was preaching on legacy, and it was really funny because I've done things, a lot of things in ministry that I regret, but impact are very forgiving. So I said, um, <laughs> they are very forgiving. I said, stand up. If you're over 50, stand up. You know, so I all stood up, and, and I said, don't you dare die. And I've got this really serious thing, don't you dare die. And this guy's thinking, oh, I've got cancer, I'll try and hang on for you, you know. I, I didn't mean that, I didn't mean that. I said, don't you dare die until you pass on everything that you have of God in you, pass it on to us. You know, and then, then they felt really different, you know. <laughs> so that, that is it with leadership, right? Let's just pass it all on. Um, have you ever sat in a meeting and there's some, you know, prophet or evangelist and they're teaching and you're just saying, yeah, but tell me how. I know the what, I know the why, just tell me how. Yeah. You know, we raised the dead and that's the fourth one this week. And you're thinking, but how did that happen? You know, so, but um, Jesus was just so open with everything. He says, I'm going to show you the Father. There's no secret here, like, you know, I'm going to give you everything. And the interesting deal is, he gave everybody the fullness of everything. So he didn't say, you know, oh, you're a tax collector and you probably ain't going to come through for me, but I'm, so I'm going to give you a, a little bit of myself. No, he gave Gave everybody everything, you know. Yeah, that's right. All right, that's yeah. Don't hold back on anyone. Even though the guy's just passing through the church and he's only there because of the girls, it just love him. You know, give him the full fullness of all that you have. And okay, something Jesus did, and I think this is the flip side to this. He held people in very high expectation. He was not afraid to make huge requests of people. So we say this in, in um, I'm part of Crosslink Board, and we say this, we say low bar join, high bar journey. That's the kingdom of God. It's a low bar join, you can get in, it's easy. You just need to forsake this, this, and come and follow. But it's a, it's a high bar journey. Because when you are in the kingdom, he says, I need this from you, and you, see if you get this. Some of the least demand in churches are in greatest demand. Yeah. Okay? So, and I know there's a, you know, I know I've just talked about control and how wrong that is, but, you know, everything in this book as a leader, you have a responsibility to make sure disciples follow this. And that's our job, isn't it? You know, keep them on track and um, keep, keep doing it ourselves and keep them doing it. So, but Jesus wasn't afraid to say, you know, leave that and, and come. Yeah. yeah. You know, I know you love your dad, but you know, the dead will bury the dead, spiritual dead will bury the physical dead, and uh, you come and follow me. So, um, 
and you know today I think leadership we don't we don't make the demands of Christ on people so all we want them to do is sit there uh, stand up sit down stand up sit down sing put your money in the bag and go away and come back next week and so that was never discipleship and that's never the leadership of Jesus so um, that's one thing he did which is very different um, he cared more about people than rules and regulations <laughs> yeah you're, this doesn't apply to you guys because you're like us right we couldn't be formal if we tried. Um, we have got a few religious things, but they're, they're slowly going, you know. We haven't had Holy Communion for a long time. Someone said to me recently, as opposed to unholy communion. You know, and then somebody was insisting that we put a cross on the building. Yeah, exactly. You wouldn't come. So, so this is why, and I actually said it publicly, I said, the reason, there's some murmurs about the cross, I said, the reason why we often put crosses on buildings is because we don't want to carry crosses ourselves. <laughs> because I don't want people to look at the building and say, oh, Simon must be a Christian. I want people to look at me and say, Simon must be a Christian, right? So, so no crosses. One woman even brought a cross that her husband had at a funeral. And she goes, you might like to put that somewhere. <laughs> I did, in the bin. <laughs> I, did really. I didn't really, but you know, we are, we, we are all religious. We've got that kind of stuff. But, but people matter. When we started in Sanford, we had a very large hall and very few people. And so all the mums and the kids used to hang around the back. And it was all right, because you could never hear them. But as a church grew. <laughs> As the church grew, the chairs went back, and now they were disturbing the thing. And one of our core values, people before programs. And so here's, I'm really diplomatic, like, so I got the mums, three, four mums together. I said, um, you know, we really want to make it really good for your kids, so we've arranged to have a little room so you can take the kids there, and they can play, and one mum goes, no, we like it at the back. I said, yeah, but, you know, you can really be with the kids, and they can just make as much noise. No, but we love it at the back. And so I was faced with my own core value. <laughs> People before programs, so... So here was I shouting over the top of these screaming kids because it's people before programs. People really matter. People are not there so your leadership can become great. Yeah, yeah people are there because they are great. And so we just keep serving and loving people. And, um, you know, people before rules and regulations. Jesus did this so well, demonstrated this all the time. So I'm going to stop there. I've, and I've done a bit of time. Um, any comments, questions, uh, violent reactions? Any? <laughs> <laughs> Any manifestations? Yes, please, yeah. What's your talking about it? Because, like, you know, you're talking about, like, say, legs on the presses, like, for me, I used to do some contracting, I used to have leverage on me. Some weren't focusing on which don't, I would force, force them to do things. Yeah. Like, manipulating them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was kind of like a big thing because it was like, you have to leave them, like, teach them in a way. You know? Yeah. And I think in the, in, in the kingdom of God, though, it's very different. But I think in the workplace, you can actually exercise something that will make them do their job. Like, you ain't going to get paid today. So I think that's perfectly reasonable if people are being treated fairly. Because if they, if they contract you and they say, I'm going to do this job for this amount of money, and you're going to pay them, but they ain't done the job, you, you have to hold them to account in the context of work. But the kingdom of God is so different. Often people say, it's an upside-down kingdom. You know, we lead by... By serving, you know, we gain by losing. It's some completely different. And so when we when we're trying to get people to go in direction, there is clear clear instructions from Scripture that we can give. Because sometimes, you know, uh, you preach a sermon and people look at you and they say, "Don't shoot the messenger." Because we are just a messenger. And as long as they can reference in Scripture, it's a much better deal because they can argue with God if they want. I'm just saying what what the book says. I'm just telling you. You know, I'm just reading the red bits to you. And so I think, you know, we can, we can be very strong with our leading as long as it's based on Scripture and it comes from God and the Holy Spirit is with us. Um, but nowhere in the process can we control the free will of a person um, and manipulate them. And so, you know, force, order, you can't even in our days. So you can't, yeah, none of that happens. And so we rely on a volunteer 
army, don't we? We rely on, we rely on God doing something in them and God doing something in us and it just comes together and it's worked for centuries. Yeah. It's worked and no matter what they do to the church, we keep getting up, don't we? Yeah. In countries where they've outruled the church, it's never going to work and uh, communism said, you know, the system of the church, you know, we just keep rising all the time because there is this Holy Spirit deal that is going on and so he calls some, some to be leaders and some to be followers and we find each other and we go on a journey together and uh, yeah we have every opportunity to mess that up and we have every opportunity to, to do it right as well so, and uh, we're not, we've not done great but we have an opportunity today to, to do it well anyone else? And the past, the, the guy speaking actually said that the fivefold ministry give out tools. That I really like. Yeah, that's that. great. That was really. Yeah, <clears throat> that is excellent. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It is. It's. Uh, you know, uh, the better word for discipleship is actually we have a better English word, coach. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so often the coach will demonstrate, and then the coach speaks, and then the coach watches the other person do it and then the coach releases him to go and do it so um, and so you know mentoring fathering discipling leading all the same really it's um, spending yourself on behalf of others as to as to bring them to Jesus so yeah um, something that you said really made it very clear for me and it was um, it's not it's function not position yeah yeah very, yeah. Very yeah, and you can function anyway, you see. So leaders who understand this, we, we, you never push for an opportunity because it's only a matter of time because, before you start functioning somewhere and leaders are happy to function anywhere. So on, honestly, this is the honest truth. If my church said to me, um, we don't need you anymore to do this, my, my leadership, and um, you need to function in the Sunday school, I'll just say, well, that was strange, but I wouldn't have a major problem with it. Honestly, I would never have a problem with it because, you know, you know, the identity is a huge thing with leadership. Yeah. You've got to know who you are. Yeah. You've got to know who God is. Yeah. When, you, when you have that right, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what they do. They can sack you tomorrow. It wouldn't matter because you know where you stand in God. Yeah. And it's only a matter of time before he moves you where he wants you. So, um, so can I just share this thing about seasons and then I'll finish. Just share something. Just believe this is somebody. So, um, so um, the Bible says, I think it's in Genesis, it says, um, as long as the earth remains, this place, there will always be seed time and harvest time. It's seasons, it's seasons. So, so as long as we're physically here, there's always going to be seasons. Seasons in scripture, it's um, literal and also spiritual as well. Um, so, you know, we have, in England, we have seasons. You don't have seasons here. We have springtime, summer, that's the harvest, autumn, and winter. And so, in Psalm 1, it talks about the due season. It's the appointed season. So, we, we, we do our lives on Kronos. I'm looking at a clock. I've gone over, but she was very gracious. But I'm, I'm part of the family, so... I'm part of the family. I'm part of the family, so... So, so um... So Cronus is how we live our lives, and Cronus is important because, you know, times, festivals, stuff. But there's another word for time in the Bible, you know, it's Kairos. Yes. Kairos is the moment of God, yeah. it's the suddenly of God. Yeah. It doesn't rely on seasons. So, you know, sometimes you have to wait out the seasons. So, yeah. I think any time in our life, um, there are seasons. So, I never get upset when I'm in winter. Because winter in the UK is it's hard, it's barren, it's cold. I never want to get out of bed. There's no visible fruit in winter. But if I could only wait out the winter, if I can only anticipate the spring, as long as the earth endures, seasons will happen. If I can just wait long enough, spring's going to come. Yes. So don't get upset, don't get anxious when people are in their summer. You may be in your winter or your spring. Don't get upset. It's only a matter of time. Yes. It's only a matter of time. And God has a way of accelerating that Kronos to Kairos. And he can do something in a moment. What can take you, it take you a lifetime to do. So, and this was very much for me. Often I'd see, wow, look at that, Lord. I've been working so hard here. And nothing's happening. And God says, just wait. 
if you can just don't abort the seasons yeah. Yeah. my mum is a teacher so you know when I was a kid I lived in the Caribbean for years mum teaches how to plant she's got like I would say green fingers she really got brown fingers but you know what I mean when I say green fingers <laughs> And she teaches how to plant. I remember teaching me and my brother, gave us some tomato seeds. You put them in the ground, you plant them, you cover them with water. Water them? Do they drink, mum? No, they don't drink, but they need water. <laughs> uh, so we press them. So what's going to happen, mum? Are we going to get a little plant? You see, it's going to grow. Wow! So here's me. My brother's younger than me. He's always clever than me. So he's gone inside. I'm there. She goes, what are you doing? I goes, I'm waiting for the plant. She goes, no. Nah. It doesn't happen that way. It takes time. It takes time. Something happens in the soil. What happens? Forget, she didn't know. She goes, just forget it. <laughs> take it take it from me. Something happens. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm at the window looking out. She goes, what are you doing? Waiting for the plant. It takes time. You know, go to bed. You know, so after a couple of days, I thought I'd go and have a look at the plant. So I thought, there's no plant. She lied. So I decide to help the seed. <laughs> Anyhow, cut a long story short, a few weeks later, there's one plant. So me and my brother's fighting. That's mine, that's yours. It's really his, I killed mine. <laughs> I aborted the process. Yes. You know? And uh, it's very easy for you to abort the process by forcing something, by neglecting something. What great opportunities uh, you have now, and I have, of preparation for something that's ahead of us. Yeah. And just keep preparing, just keep preparing yourself. It's like this whole thing about marriage, isn't it, you know? Um, everybody, I do this talk at, with Wyram about relationships, and uh, it's really good fun, because I'm really upfront with it all. And I say, you know, when, when some of the guys on Wyram says, I said, make a list, because I'm into the list, you know, and pray about what you see think, you know, is this thing you're looking for in a, in, in a partner? And um, some of the guys, you know, she must be well presented, uh, beautifully dressed, hair always done, and they go to the list. And then he's walking around with his pants around his backside. He hasn't brushed his teeth. He, hasn't, he doesn't shave. And I, and I say, there's only one problem between you and your list. And he goes, what? I said, no chance. <laughs> Because um, you, need to, you need to be um, what you want to attract, right? Okay? And I think, you know, definitely if you want to be a great leader, great opportunity to keep preparing yourself. To say, Lord, here I am. This is my season. I'm not going to go and abort it. I'm not going to say to Cheryl and Chris every day, I've got this word. You must really let me preach. You know, you'll, you, you'll, you'll preach in time. Um, and, and preaching's overrated anyhow, right? Oh, my goodness. We just need people to live some stuff, not to keep talking. Talking stuff. <laughs> so anyhow, <laughs> anyhow, back to that serious thing about that seed. Just really learn to anticipate seasons because um, that's a summon tonight, or a few of us. So, what was that? <laughs> Actually, I went on a, uh, I'm going to close now. I'm going to, I'm going to close now. I'm not very holy. I know I'm not very holy, but I went on a comedy cruise to... Because um, yeah. I honestly, if I could do anything else in my life, I used to be... I was a sports instructor and I was a firefighter for five years. And I did some other stuff. But if I could do anything, it would be customs. Because I reckon I can pick them. <laughs> Forget your detectors, discernment. Sometimes, sometimes I, I get to travel a fair bit, and sometimes I just get to the back of the queue and I'm just watching. He's got something. He's guilty. Look at the face. You know. But then God, God convicts me about judgment. So, so customs. If it wasn't customs and, and what I do now, I'd be I'd be a stand -up, I'd want to be a stand-up comic. Honest, yeah, because I love I love to see people laugh. You see, and I've got this whole routine I do about you know childbirth. So yeah, 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 a whole a whole routine. And you heard that that was the warm up the warm up one. That that was a, that was the first one. So what I'm saying is I appreciate you laughing. And so and um, I said to someone here, really appreciated a couple of you, don't want to point you out, just being our service. You know sometimes in the service um, you get lifted just because people are there and where they are with God, you know, and there's a few of you ladies at the front just help to lift everyone, the whole meeting, and so it's amazing how God puts people together, and um, so if they ever, if Chris and Cheryl's ever nasty to you, you know where to come. <laughs> Unique, right? This is how unique, Chris, uh, uh, 
our deal is, right? So I, I say to our people at Impact, they're, they're a bit shy. They're not as bold as you guys, but they're learning. So I just said, if, you, if any of you don't get out of bed, don't you then make an excuse for the church. You can go to the Filipino one. You may struggle because it might be in Filipino. Or you can... <laughs> Or you can go in the evening, in the evening, and you know what? Well, what if they like you more than they like me? <laughs> I will just go. <laughs> because they don't, they don't belong to me. Yeah. They don't belong to me. In fact, our, our church is a feeder church yeah. for a large church, a Baptist church in, oh, I want to say. <laughs> We call ourselves the feeder church. So we get them saved, and, then, uh, and now they say, we want to find a real church. <laughs> it's true. And so we just call ourselves the feeder church, and we have no issue with that at all. Okay. It's great when people stay, right? Because when people stay, you can build something and invest in something, but they're not our people. And so, you know, I might even come and join you guys one day. <laughs> Hey, God, can I pray? Can I pray yeah, for you? Yeah. Do you go on all night or did I take all night? We'll probably do a coffee break after. Okay, okay. Oh, thank you. Yes, I'd love to. Yeah, and the great thing is um, I'm around. So I didn't come in here and tell you a load of stuff that I'm not going to be accountable to. So I like this deal. See, so when you see me controlling someone, you hey, excuse me. You know, practice, practice what you preach, mate. <laughs> Yeah. Well, let, let's pray. Yeah. Lord, we just declare that you are good. Lord, you are the only one who is, who is good. And um, thank you for calling us. Thank you for involving us in your amazing plan of salvation and reconciliation. Father, thank you for this amazing group of people. Lord, we I thank you for them. And just um, the rubbing shoulders, just the comfort to know that they are there and around seeking you, loving you. Pray for these people, Lord. Um, anoint them and appoint them, Lord, into your... Um, your work, I pray. Father, let um, great leaders come from this place because yeah. great servants are in the making. And Lord, let some significant things be done on the earth through these people. Lord, um, pastors and teachers, evangelists, prophets, apostles, God, raise them up as they willingly lay down their lives. And uh, Lord, equip them in these days and uh, keep us all from distraction, Lord, yes. that we be focused on you and your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen.